Just like a race car, basically. Today I'm going to be shifting this Rotorainer, it's on pasture so it's quite easy to shift. Uh, there's no lines you have to follow like if, as if it was in wheat. We did have one in wheat but now that it's uh, mid-February we've had to stop irrigating it to shut down the plants so we can harvest it. Now maybe a few of you don't know what a Rotorainer is, it's an irrigator that's self-propelled under hydrodynamic principles in order to drag itself up the paddock and water on a certain amount, whatever amount that I want it to put on. It uses a cam system in order to propel itself up the paddock. It just takes about 45 minutes from yard back to the yard to shift it. Anyway guys, let's crack into it. Okay guys, so here we are at the Rotorainer. Millie's come to help me and the irrigators down there so it did start out way up there at a marked position and it's come all the way down here overnight dragging the hose with it of course it's meant to do that and parked up there this morning i turned it off now this irrigator takes x amount of hours to do this run the irrigator from sitting in the one spot irrigating hours on end of course i knew when it was going to finish so I shut it off after about half an hour of sitting there in the one spot which is about perfect really um, because you've got to irrigate that spot where it sits as well. This morning I simply just turned that valve slowly. This farm is on a VSD irrigation system so that's basically a couple of computers that run the irrigation pumps monitoring pressure and flow uh, in order to uh, hold the system at a certain pressure and flow. So if I was to open this the pumps would amp up and get spinning faster and if I was to close it like I did this morning the pumps would amp down and slow right down. Yeah obviously I've turned it off, uh, I've let the water drain back. Uh, you want to watch it guys that there isn't a lot of pressure in there and in, in the underground system if you close it really quickly all that water and pressure and flow has got to go somewhere and it may find a weaker point so you want to watch that i close it really slowly and then that last uh, i'd say one full turn of that tap takes about 15 seconds you just close it really slowly in order to slow that flow down so you don't blow out your underground main. Without further ado, we'll throw this tap on, go down to the Rotorainer, pack it up and move it across to its next run, set it up and out we go. Right, let's crack into it. down at the irrigator I've got the tractor park there ready to come in and snoop into the hitch so I can't get in there at the moment because of that wire rope there it is of course part of the way that the irrigator walks its way up the paddock is that it's anchored into a post other people use concrete blocks under the ground with a hoop but we just put a post and then a mouse trap goes over that and that's how it anchors itself so it's still anchored in at the moment so i can't back the tractor in but it's what i'll do is i'll let the mouse trap go and then slide this piece of box section back in and then wrap the wire rope around the frame in order to pack it up but also i'll click it out of gear this one doesn't really like staying out of gear unfortunately it likes to click itself back in so it's a wee bit difficult this old girl uh, get rid of the hose and let it drain. But downhill is this way so gravity will want to feed the water out. Now I've parked the trailer here not only to let the tractor get onto the irrigator but I can easily get this hose around and onto the purge pump. So blow air back through. Yes I'll be blowing it back up 
hill but it will eventually all get out and that will make it easier for the trailer to wind the hose up of course after I've finished blowing all the water out I'll flick the hose round change over the PTO from the purge pump to the reel on the trailer and then wind the hose up and so I can move it but the reason why I've parked the trailer there is not only to for easy access for the hose but I'm using it as a reference point for when I park the rotorainer in its next spot so that I'm not getting off the tractor and making sure I'm not spraying the uh, neighbor or the rotorainer booms are going to hit the trees I'll be looking across the paddock in the drill lines and seeing where the trailer is and then the road trainer is obviously parked just towards the trees from that point so I'll be using the road trainer trailer as a reference point to park up the road trainer in its starting position so right I think that's enough explaining I think uh, I think we need to get into it guys Okay guys, just a few little footnotes that I thought of when I was packing up the Rotorana, but there's the reason why I wear gloves, and that is quite simple. See this piece of string here? This baling twine has got caught up on all these strands, these loose end strands on this wire rope. Now those strands can catch and rip your skin quite easy so that's the reason why I wear gloves it's uh, health and safety guys you got to look after yourself um, so when you're winding in this rope here a little strand can be sticking off and just grab your skin quite easy so that is why I wear the gloves but also when you are pushing that wheel back to uh, unhitch the hose if it's too heavy guys just use the tractor I normally use the tractor but in this position the rotorainer is actually this part of the paddock it's kind of sloped back a wee bit so the rotorainer uh, seems to roll back quite easy so that's the reason why I did that but I guess now we are on to moving it across to the next run So just one little quick tip there guys is do not travel fast with these machines. These booms they get swaying like that up and down at each side and they take a lot to stop. So and if you don't stop and it carries on you end up with bent axles like this. Now we have carried on with these bent axles it's really good for cambering you know around corners just like a race car basically. Um, yeah so as what we've done is just slid them in and then equalize them just like uh, when you take your car to the wheel alignment workshop or whatever we've just aligned these wheels so that it goes straight up the paddock and doesn't have a massive curve to it and take out the hydrant or other such things but as you would have noticed as you may have noticed on that little time lapse i caught the boom with the rollover protection system on the tractor or those bars that go over me and protect me I caught them so that it stayed straight with me and that stops the flailing of the boom and it also stops it from going out wide uh, wrecking those axles or catching the trees or any power lines that are nearby so it's just a flick of the lever lowers down the two point linkage and puts the boom onto my rollover protection system and it just holds it in one spot. We do have ropes uh, that you can hold on to, but I just prefer the lazy option. But right, let's get this hose all purged and rolled up. So this size of hose tends to take about a couple of minutes to blow all the water out. 
So the simple way of telling that it's empty is I just stand on it and if I can touch the ground with both feet it means there's no pressure of the air pushing the water out and all the water has been blown out or enough has been blown out I should say because these systems aren't exactly perfect so is what I'll do is I'll shut the tractor down take the PTO off the purge pump and put it onto the trailer reel and then I'll put the hose through here hopefully that camera's on the right angle and put it into that hole there, put the mail in into that hole and then she'll start winding up uh, to the skulls. Now if you do have an extra hose on the top, make sure you don't do it as casually as I have as the hose likes to drop down and catch the other hose that's just being wound in or wound out. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so back there I didn't explain something, but it's to do with the tractor when you're winding in the hose. And that is that I had the handbrake on when winding in the hose. That, is just, that it was simply for filming purposes. Now normally I would leave the handbrake off and the tractor and the trailer would get towed up the paddock by the weight of the hose when it's being wound in. We like to have the tractor and the trailer towed up the paddock backwards it is somewhat unsafe but you've got to have your concentration and keep that pto shaft as straight as possible and uh, not get on too much of an angle when doing that the reason why we like to do that is that the hose lasts longer not being dragged through the grass through the crop whatever so that's a little footnote there but the battery's running out guys i'm pushing to get this done i guess i'll just explain it all and then leave it on time lapse and you guys can figure out the rest but we've got a little oil container that center seal in the turntable we like to put a little bit of oil in that that helps it uh live for a wee bit longer helps it keep it supple um grease it all but first i'll pull the hose out with the frame unwinding frame will come out this side because the hydrant is on this side of this run uh, then i'll pull the hose out leaving a big arcing corner so that the water has a nice flowing turn when the pressure comes on and it doesn't get held up by the uh, a kink in it of course so then i'll unwind the wire rope flick it on the back you'll see a section of wire rope just sitting there and that I'll be pulling from a different uh, part other than the end. That is so that when it gets up the other end, I'll hook it in by what is effectively the end of the wire rope so that the irrigator sits here in one spot for quite a wee while to water this uh, uh, area a predetermined amount by the length of that wire rope. Complicated, I know, but I'm sure you'll figure it out yeah grease it all get it ready to go make sure it's on the right amount of cams i'll have to come back at a later date and explain it to you because yeah like i said the battery's running out but right without further ado let's get into it guys let's get this done So a lot of you are probably wondering uh, what kind of oil we throw in to that seal. And it is simply just oil we bought off the McLaren F1 team 
Uh, it's top grade, really expensive stuff. You do dribble around the place, who cares really? They still make it, blah, blah, blah. Nah, of course not. It's just old used engine oil, guys. Uh, a little bit of gearbox oil in there as well. Just any kind of old oil that's otherwise going to be thrown away, we throw in there. And it just helps keep that seal supple. But is what we've done is just got a four litre container and just simply drilled a hole in the top, about a five mil hole, and simply just throw it in there. There's a cavity there where the oil will sit and the turntable will of course turn around and it'll slowly drop in there or oil the seal up. So that's just that, quite a simple little feature, easy to do, costs nothing and um, yeah, a great way to use an old product. So, right, let's unwind it. Oh, and we also do use it on the chain of the trailer. So just quickly guys, you want to set out slowly with the hose and trailer. So when I start it up, that trailer will come up and the hose will feed out quite easily. Now you want to set out slowly or else you'll be pulling this hose up the paddock and the hose will come in behind this tire and there'll be all kind of sharp angles for that water to get around and also it'll age the hose quite badly so just set off slowly so when you're getting near the end of the run as you can see the anchors right there slow right down and in small increments and this lets the hose, or sorry, the wire rope on the irrigator slow down as well and you don't end up with a bird's nest within the reel of the rotorainer. Now as you can see I've turned the corner here, pulled that wire rope out as far as possible but also the next thing is what I'll do is back up and the wire rope should unhitch itself hopefully for the video purposes there we go finally and so that leaves the wire rope close to that post which is obviously the anchor so guys welcome back to the rotorainer now the other day unfortunately the battery died in the shallow minutes so here Millie and I uh, back out here we're going to set it going for overnight or let it go overnight but there are a few things that I'd just like to cover off I'm pretty sure I never covered off before the battery died now we've left the wire rope in a big zigzag now that is because when the slack is taken up by the rotor owner uh, in the early stages of it getting going uh, we don't want the wire rope to wrap over itself and uh, tie a knot in the wire rope. So that's why we leave it in a big U-shape or a zigzag so that it pulls it clean and it doesn't have, leave a knot. Now, the mouse trap chain has gone over top of the post and then all I'm going to do is just pull this pin Sit that up there like that and then close that down like so and there we go there we have it so that's just the simple design of the mouse trap and then once i want to get rid of the rotorainer once it's finished this run i just pull that pin out lift that up and it uh, lets the wire rope go so so what we're going to go, go do now is turn the hydrant on, the water pressure will go to the rotorainer, it will go out the booms and then that pressure will expand that hose under the turntable and it'll click itself into gear automatically. So right, let's go do that. Bye. Uh -huh. 